Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical success, State Fair, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another thrilling musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our show train is filled with melody and magic by Rogers and Hammerstein tonight. And when you add Lucille Norman, well, we think that's something to shout about. What do you say, everybody? Yeah! Where are we bound for? Our state fair is a great state fair. Don't miss it. Don't even be late. For the first prize this year, Abel. Well, if I was to judge, you'd get it. Abel, eh? what's that in your pocket? Now, Marge. You haven't been using my best hairbrush on that hog. Uh, blue, blue boy's no hog. He's a prize Hampshire boar, and he's going to win the blue ribbon at the state fair. Margie, is that you? Yes, Ma. It's me. Well, don't you feel good, child? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. I don't really know what's wrong with me. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I'm as starry-eyed and vaguely discontented. Like a nightingale without a song to sing Oh, why should I have spring fever When it is a new spring I keep wishing I were somewhere else Walking down a strange new street Oh, boy, I began to move. I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydream. I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud or a robin or think she needs, Ma? Sulfur and molasses? <laughs> oh, Pa, I know what'll fix her up. Three days at the state fair. Gee, I never saw so many people. Well, I'm going to 
put Blue Boy in his pen. Come on, Blue Boy, come on. Can I go to the Midway, Ma? Well, just don't be too late getting back, Ma. Stop right up, get your tickets for the most thrilling roller coaster ride in the world. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Gee. What's the matter, Bobby Lots? Haven't you got the money for a ride? Oh, sure. But I'm afraid of roller coasters. Oh, come on. We'll ride it together. Climb aboard, Bobby Locks. But I... I don't even know your name. I'm Pat Gilbert. There. Now we're old friends. But... but... Hang on. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh! Here comes the big one. Well, how'd you like it? Oh, I'm glad you were there to hang on to. <laughs> you practically pulled the lapels off my coat, Bobby Locks. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call me Bobby Locks? Oh, because when you walk, your hair bounces up and down on the back of your neck. <laughs> well, everybody's hair bounces up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Mine doesn't. <laughs> I mean, girl. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. All these people around here, Bobby Locks, and I can only see one girl. Now, Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> oh, please. You've got to call me Pat. Look, I made a mistake. This isn't a good night for roller coaster rides. You know what? It's a grand night for singing. The moon is flying high. And somewhere a bird who is found, he'll be heard. He's throwing his heart at the sky. It's a grand night. someday with my own byline. You know, any day now I'm expecting a call from a big paper in Chicago. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Margie, is that you? Yes, Ma. I'll be right in. This where you're staying? Well, we're sort of camping out in the trailer. I'll see you again, huh? Well, I guess so. How about you? Now look, any time I want to throw in the sponge, you'll know it. I just won't be around. Oh, but Bobby Locks, we're going to have some high old times together. How do you know? Why, I could tell from the very first time I, I got a look at you. I saw you standing in the sun And you were something to see I know what I like And I like 
like what I saw, and I said to myself, that's for me. A lovely morning, you remarked, and I was quick to agree. You wanted to talk, and I nodded my head. As I have breathlessly said, that's for me. I left you standing under stars, the day's adventures are through. second act of State Fair in just a moment. Sooner or later, the time comes when every youngster asks a few questions about Santa Claus. And the other day, I heard a father do a pretty good job of explaining, like this. Daddy, does Santa really visit all the houses in a sleigh and bring the presents? The other fellows say it isn't true. Well, son, I guess St. Nick would be in for some mighty tough sledding if he didn't have so many helpers working for him with sleighs on tracks. Sleighs on tracks? What are they? Well, you know, railroad trains. That's the big way Santa has of seeing to it that everybody gets their presents. Yes, like all of us, Santa depends on the railroads and the Railway Express Agency to move the tremendous mountain of Christmas mail, express, and merchandise freight. This year, for example, the railroads expect to move more than five and a half billion pieces of mail between our cities during the 24 days before Christmas. That adds up to an average of 35 gifts and greeting cards for every person in the United States, enough to load almost 63,000 standard size mail cards. Figures like that point up how truly indispensable the railroads are when it comes to moving the nation's mail. In fact, the railroads are the only form of transportation big enough, flexible enough, and economical enough to handle the day-by-day mass-hauling job our mails require. Yes, and the essentiality of the railroad's dependable all-weather, all-season transportation service becomes even more evident than usual when Christmas mail begins to fill postal boxes to overflowing. 
And you can help the railroads do that tremendous transportation job more easily if you make sure to do your Christmas mailing early. Both the railroads and the post office department will appreciate your cooperation. It will help to make a merrier Christmas for everybody. We continue with Rogers and Hammerstein's State Fair, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Lucille Norman. Funny thing happens when you meet a girl who really knocks you off your feet. <laughs> you can't help wondering why it is you have spring fever. When it is... Starry-eyed and vaguely discontented Like a nightingale without a song to sing Oh, why should I have spring fever When it is an even spring I keep wishing I was somewhere Walking down a strange new street Hearing words that I have never heard From a girl I've yet to meet I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud or a robin on the wing, but I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well be spring, it might. Bobby Locks, when the fair is over. Oh, go back home, I guess. And maybe get married. Well, you, you aren't engaged, are you? Well, there's a boy I've been going with for a long time. Think you'll ever get married, Pat? Who, me? Oh, sure, sometime. You know, things like this, I mean, like us, well, you you got to keep them getting too serious. You know? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Maybe you'll never be the love of my life Maybe I'm not the girl of your dream But isn't it kind of fun To look in each other's eyes Swapping romantic dreams Maybe I'm not a girl to hold and to hold Maybe you're not a boy who would stay But isn't it kind of fun Carousing around the town Dancing the nights away Oh, isn't it kind of fun holding hands? According to a sweet and corny custom. Isn't it kind of fun making vows? Admitting that we both intend to Boston. Maybe we're out for laughs, a girl and a boy, kidding across the table for two. But haven't you got a hunch? That this is the real McCoy And all the things we tell each other Are true Hey, isn't it almost time for judging your old man's hog? And Ma's mincemeat Come on, Pat We've got to get over to the judging stand <laughs> Attention, please. We now have the judging of Hampshire Boars Grand Championship class. Oh, come on, Blue Boy, get up. Pa, he's just lying there on his side. Is he sick? Yeah, love sick. That's his trouble. Blue Boy got mighty sweet on a sow on the pen next to his. Now she ain't around, and he's carrying the torch. Here come the judges. 
You've got to do something, Pa. Yeah. Oh. Hey, blue boy, look there, look. There's your lady friend. <laughs> yeah, that's a spirit, blue boy. Now look proud. No hog on four feet can beat you now. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Oh, now, Mother. After you and Blue Boy walking off with all those blue ribbons, my cooking has to get at least an honorable mention. We know you're the best cook in the world, Ma. Even if those old judges don't. Uh, quiet, please. First prize for sweet pickles goes to Mrs. Edwin Metcalf, Pottsville. Oh, that right. old Mrs. Metcalf got all the prizes. Come on, Abel. Let's go. And now the Distinguished Achievement Award. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Billy. No, don't go yet, Ma. The judges vote unanimously to give that award to a lady who has concocted the most delicious mincemeat Mince meat. ever entered in a state fair. Mrs. Melissa Freight of Brunswick. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh, Ma, aren't you proud? It's enough for me that my family likes my cooking. But if it's the best in Iowa, I think I'm going to cry. Pat, Pat, did you hear about the judging? Yeah, you more and more walked off with all the prizes. Huh? Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I'm so proud and grateful. I just don't know what to do. Well, you'd better tip your hat to the state you live in. That's right. Where'd we be if we wasn't for Iowa? Oh, I know, oh, I owe, I owe Iowa. I owe Iowa all I owe, and I know why. I am my own way born bread, and on Iowa corn I'm fed, not to mention no barley, wheat, and rye. I owe Iowa for her ham, and her beef, and her lamb, and her strawberry jam, and her pie. I owe Iowa more than I can ever say. Tonight, Bobby Locks? If you want to. I'll meet you by the Calliope in front of the roller coasters. About 8 o'clock. I'll be there. Margie. Hello, Pa. Well, we've, we've been looking all over for you. I was supposed to meet somebody. He promised Thankfully, he'd be right here by the roller coaster. Well, everybody's going home now, baby. The fair's over. He must have just forgotten. Yes, I guess that's it, Pa. That must be what happened. Look, Bobby Knox, any time I want to throw in the sponge, you'll know it. I, I just won't be around. Oh, Pa, please, take me home. Same since we came back from the fair. Well, Ma, I get a feeling that Margie's suffering from the same ailment that Blue Boy had. Ah, oh. 
You think that young reporter, Philip? Well, hogs are people. The love bug bites them all sooner or later. Oh, there goes the telephone. Margie, will you answer it? All right, Ma. Frank's residence. Margie, is that you? Pat, where are you calling from? You've got to forgive me, Bobby Locks. I, I got that Chicago job. Is that where you're calling from, Chicago? No, I'm right here in town. I came to ask you if you'd marry me. Oh, Pat, I can't believe it. You don't have to believe it. Just say you love me. Oh, I do, Pat. I do. I'll be pulling in your driveway in three minutes. Oh, hurry, hurry. Ma, Pa, I'm going to get married. What? Before supper? <laughs> if you'll have me. Gee, do you realize what's happened? I got the best prize in the whole state fair. It's a grand night for singing. The moon is flying high. And somewhere a bird who has gone to be heard is throwing his heart at the sky. It's a grand night for singing. Jeanette Nolan, Forrest Lewis, Jerry Hausner, Marvin Miller, and our entire company. State Fair by Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein II was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee and presented by special arrangement with 20th Century Fox, producers of How to Marry a Millionaire in Cinemascope and Technicolor with Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, and Lauren Bacall. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? This week, more than 1,200 boys and girls representing the more than 2 million members of the nation's 4-H clubs are holding their annual congress in Chicago. 4-H clubs throughout the country have inspired rural youth to carry on worthwhile agricultural projects both in the home and in the field and have helped make possible a better way of life for all of us. And America's railroads have long worked actively with them to achieve these goals. Not only do the railroads provide the farmer with the efficient, low-cost transportation he needs to market his crops, they do much to help improve crops and agricultural methods. By working actively with such groups of young people as the 4-H clubs, the railroads are helping Americans enjoy a still better and even more abundant supply of food and fiber. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is the nicest thing at the State Fair, lovely Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon. I love every minute of it. Well, Lucy, it's like old home week having you back. Don't stay away so long. Any time you say. Tell me, Gordon, what's on the show train next Monday night? Well, here's a hint. Sweethearts make love their very own. Mmm, Victor Herbert. Give that little lady a Cupid doll. <laughs> yes, sir, it's Sweethearts, Lucy. And one of the stars of the New York City Opera Company, Elaine Malvin, will be with us as we make with the shenanigans in that fabulous musical laundry. We'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. As usual, you were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> the Voice of Firestone's 25th anniversary show next on the NBC Radio Network.